Azola Serafini is the location of an hydroelectrical plant on Po River. With its 80 megawatts power, it is the greatest hydropower plant in Italy. A double dam between the island and the two river banks, create a difference in level on the stream. The lake behind the dams has an almost steady level, at 41 meters over the medium sea level. The river besides, changes its level in a range of 28 meters over the medium sea level, on summer, and 36 meters, in a rainy autumn week. The existing water lock, is now out of order because of the erosion of the river bottom. It was time to build a new water lock, able to work for next 100 years. The new canal mouth, far from the dam, and the bottom, set at 24 meters over the medium sea level, will avoid the water erosion close to the downstream gate. The new water lock will make possible to bypass the dams up to a difference in level of 16 meters, from the maximum navigation upstream level, 42 meters, to the minimum downstream level, 26 meters. Yet, the new bypass needed new general layout of all the area involved, a new main bank, 6 meters high and 2 kilometers long, a new canal, over 1 kilometer long, to link the river and the water lock, a new bridge, 120 meters long, crossing the new canal. The first job in the building plan was the new bank, over 40,000 cubic meters of well compacted clay, allowed to dismantle the existing bank and gain the working plane. At the same time, the building of the new bridge ensured the way to the island. While designing the bridge, we rejected the typical foundation plates for the pillars. We preferred a couple of concrete columns, 30 meters deep and with a diameter of 2.5 meters. This device ensured several benefits. Concrete works took the half of the time. Columns and concrete works were entirely made by machines, standing on the existing plane, avoiding sheet piles, groundwater pumping and useless digging. It will not exist in any erosion problem under foundation plates. They saved 15% of the costs of the whole bridge. As soon as the new roads were ready, it was possible to start digging the canal and the water lock. The downstream canal, 40 meters large at the bottom, and 110 meters large at the top, had a section of over 1,200 square meters. The upstream canal was just an enlargement of the existing one. All the slopes and the bottom, 105,000 square meters, were covered by cyclopean stones. Over 150,000 tons of natural stones were casted. As told, water lock bottom was set at 24 meters over the medium sea level. A 20 meters deep digging, needed a very hard structure to react background soil and water pressure. A preliminary digging till the water ground level. A double line of 32 meters deep concrete sheet pile walls. A 4 meters thick jet grouting bottom plug. Four tiebax lines, set in advancing while the digging was in progress. At the final, a definitive 4 meters thick reinforced plate have been designed as foundation of the whole structure. It was casted in two layers 12.5 meters long, as soon as the digging ended. I asked the walls had been designed to be casted in small portion. The canal was divided in 12.5 meters long frames. The walls were divided in five steps, less than four meters high. Height and length had to allow to perform each single operation, formwork setting, reinforcement steel setting, and concrete casting, within the day, and without any provisional structures or lifting platforms. In this way, I achieved to set a flexible daily production plan and control, to minimize formwork downtime, to quickly react to possible setbacks, to avoid casting interruptions, to work in advancing without stops. Moreover, this device allowed to exactly set the thick of each wall climbing step, saving the concrete not strictly necessary. I also asked, the reinforcement steel had been designed as pre-shaped meshes and rolls, produced on purpose. 
just like has a precasted structure, the setting of the steel had to be very easy and quick, also thanks to the low weight due to the limited dimension of each wall portion. Using meshes, I could exactly calibrate, up to millimeters, the distance between steel bars, using only the steel really necessary. A special water flowing system had been designed as an improvement of the original solution. A great concrete volume contains a kind of manifold, conveying the water in two side tunnels. A finite element analysis demonstrated this solution can save several minutes in the filling up and in the empty of the water lock. At the beginning and at the end of the tunnels, four little gates manage water flowing. A particular device had been adopted to manage to cast a sloping concrete surface, and to create working planes. Firstly a jet grouting bottom plug, consolidated a sloping ground soil layer. It was later dug in stairway shape, creating several working planes, so that it was easy to set reinforcing steel and steel formwork tube. The great concrete cube was then casted in following layers, no higher than 1.5 meters. The thickness of concrete elements, required the control of their inner temperature for the first seven days since the casting. Moreover the designer imposed the formworks to be left in order for not less than four days. A set of digital heat detectors worked in each concrete cast, monitoring heat trend for seven days. A series of polyethylene one half inch pipes, feed by cool water, were incorporated in the concrete. A system composed by valves and pumps connected to the heat detectors, regulated water flow in order to control the temperature. A fully automatic system, will allow the water lock working without the presence of any operator on site. From aboard, a mobile call can announce the approaching and indicate boat direction. A system composed by level detectors, traffic lights and radars, watch over the whole crossing. Obviously the crossing can also be led in manual way by an operator standing on the bank or by a remote wireless control and a video supervising system. Main value items of the work. Concrete casting plan. The working plan forecast almost 200 casts, in less than 230 days, with a medium daily working team of 15 journeymen. At the final, the structure needed about 35,000 cubic meters of concrete. 5,000 tons of reinforcement steel and 10,000 square meters of formwork surface. High diameter columns. A 2.5 meters diameter column is very unusual, because it can be set only in particular ground soils, and it requires particular conditions. Drilling, steel setting and concrete cast have to be performed within the day, in a double turn working day. A 30 meters deep column, has a volume of about 150 cubic meters, and need over 15 tons of reinforcement steel. Concrete casting, performed by a down up flow pipe, have to be quick enough to allow the upper concrete to lift up before hardening. It need a particular concrete mix design too. The first meters of the drilling, need a heavy steel form work. Gates assembling plan. Leonardo's gates design, started from logistics transport and lifting problems. In particular, the lifting up of the greater hole doors, 75 tons, will risk to be very expensive and complicated. We chose to deliver in site 8 elements and to assembly the gate standing in his vertical final site. Each element, 9 tons of average weight, should be set above the other, bound to the concrete back wall, and welded on site with platforms. Instead the smaller, 9 meters high and made by 3 elements, could be welded in plane and lifted up by an ordinary crane.